this gentleman coming in to pick up his order. I want to make sure that everything is all ready for him. Got the sonic tubs here, and we got some. the gentleman that ordered the tubs and the bobs. Yes, 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 the sonic tubs and the bobs. Yeah, welcome in, yeah. Well, we have them, we have them right here. We have the three sonic tubs that you ordered. You have a vast collection, and you want to make sure that everything is in pristine, as close to pristine condition as possible. Yes, I understand. Absolutely. So, I don't normally let people come around the counter. But for you, I will. And you can check these out with me um, together. Take a, a close look at everything that's here. Make sure they are to your satisfaction. Sounds great. Just give me a second. I'll have you come around the counter. Okay, as you can see, we have the pump, we have the tubs, excuse me. Um, we have the three that you ordered. Let's start by looking at number nine. Number nine is called SPO the Chameleon. SPO the Chameleon. And as you see, I told you they were the first edition. And I believe you said you had all of these. You were just waiting on these three to come in, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So SPO is here. And then number 10, we have Rogue the Bat. Rogue the Bat. And Rogue has sort of a smirky, bemused look on her face. Silver the Hedgehog. We have this one as well that you ordered. There it is. There it is. So, now these Mortal Kombat Pops that you ordered, we have the four that have come in. Let's go over them one by one, and of course, because you are one of the best customers that I do have, um, I have some protective cases for you to put these in. So I have two good customers, one of which I confuse with you, and I confuse you with the other gentleman, who actually 
is supposed to be in later today. So when I said that you were a great customer of mine, it is true. I just confused you with the other gentleman, and that's why when you came in, I asked if you were the gentleman that ordered these tubs here in the pops. So let's take a look at the pops that you ordered. So first up, we have Scorpion from Mortal Kombat 1, number 1021. fire coming from his hands here. Now, if you haven't played the first Mortal Kombat, uh, when I say the first, I mean it's really Mortal Kombat 12, but um, he is actually a good guy. It's Sub-Zero that is the bad guy in this game, in this version of events. On the back, you have the other two that you've ordered as well. So let's put Mr. Scorpion here in a protective case. And these will come free of charge, of course. Okay. Number 1022 is in fact the aforementioned Sub-Zero. You can see he has ice forming in his hands to freeze his opponent. And the same three collectible characters. So let's have Sub-Zero. came in, I was surprised that I did not see Liu Kang. Uh, you figured he would be in his uh, fire god attire, but instead he just looks like a regular monk. Very strange that they decided to go in this vein, because in the game he doesn't even appear as this so I just I don't understand why they did it that way. I'd be interested to ask if I could. Let's put him in his case. channels to collect 40 of them. There is, of course, a 100% finder's fee for anything that I have to go above and beyond for for my clients. I'm sure you're okay with that. Oh yes, it's here. So, number 1024, that was not even advertised because it is a limited edition uh, model. We have a Funko limited edition of only 5,000 pieces, and it's Melina, and she has her mask on to cover her Tarkatan illness. As you can see, she's not even advertised on the back of this. So this is indeed a limited edition pop, and of course we have a protective case for her. seen the merchandise. I believe 
that's to your liking, is that correct? Great. Stepping from outside the counter here, and we can go back to discussing business and a price for all of these. Yes, just go right through the door you came in. I'll see you in about two, 10 seconds. So, if you give me about an hour or so, I will be able to box these up for you and put them aside. So, you can carry them out and they will be protected from the rain and the snow. Yeah. I appreciate you working with me on that. And, um, for your troubles, I'll give you a ten dollar store credit that you can use on your next purchase. How does that sound? Yes, thank you very much for understanding. Okay, yes, about an hour. I'll see you soon. Okay, I have to box these up. I have to make sure that they are done because I have this other guy coming in here. Let me move these away here to the side. Let's throw that here. I'm hearing things. Okay. This Contra Operation Galuga, why is this still out? I told him to put this away in the Nintendo Switch section. He did not. Okay, it's not a big deal. I'll do it myself. Yes, I have been expecting you, actually. I confused you with the other gentleman that comes into my store as much as you do. I thought you had his pops and tubs, and he had what we're about to go over together. No, no, no. I, I kept these aside for you, don't you worry. I figured out who was who because um, I asked him sort of a silly question and he uh, kind of questioned it and 
I had to tell him uh, my embarrassment that I confused each of you. So now your stuff is, is here actually. Would you like to take a look? Yes. So you mentioned that you were interested in some handheld video games. Like Tiger Electronic video games, is that correct? Yes, very obscure collecting those, but it's fun and, and fairly inexpensive. But I wanted to show you something a little bit different than that. For collectors such as ourselves, we like the finer things in life. We like to find rare and uncommon niceties. And I figured that I could easily show you the vast collection of Tiger Electronics that I have. But I figured I'd want to show you something a bit different. The same, but a bit different. So, with your permission, I'd like to show you these games instead. Sure, well, I'll show you a few, and we'll see if you like what you see and want to see more. How's that sound? Okay. So the <clears throat> Tiger Electronic games, when they came out, they were a step above the uh, Game & Watch that Nintendo had to come out with. Now, the Game & Watch series were just little pocket-like watches, if you will, of an LCD, and you know, aside from having an alarm and keeping time uh, for... They were made, designed primarily for, you know, car rides for the kids or gentlemen in the business sector who were on trains and had to go on flights and it was something they could easily just play and pass the time. But Tiger capitalized on those and made a little bit, um, a little bit more in-depth, and when I say in-depth, I mean not that in-depth, but a tiny bit above the depthness of a Game & Watch for those games, and they were practically, uh, you know, household items. All the kids had them. They had sports titles and games that were based on properties, Disney and Marvel and so forth. But Radio Shack... Radio Shack was a business in the 80s and 90s that sold a ton of electronic uh, items, mostly car stereos and stereos for the house and record players and things of that nature, light bulbs and things. But in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, Radio Shack came out with their version of the Nintendo handheld. So I'd like to show you some of those. Now, Radio Shack games, there were three different genres. Primary genres. You had your sports, you had your racing games, but then you also had action-adventure titles as well. Um, occasionally some puzzle, but primarily those were the three. So the first one I want to show you is this full court basketball game. Uh, this is the only one that I have right now to show you that does not have either the box or the original instructions, but nonetheless it is in very good condition. You have the directional buttons, and then you have the sound and level buttons, the on-off tiny button here, and then the shoot pass button as well. So, there's this. Then, we have some games in boxes I'd like to show you. Let's start with the, um, we'll keep continuing with the sports theme. 
we have in the box the baseball game. Now the baseball and football LCD games, they came in different sizes and different um, iterations. They were the same game, but like Tiger, Tiger had different colors on their game. Clamshell here, They're not clamshell, but um, the front of the of the game itself. Like Tiger's baseball, there'd be blue over here and white, or red and white, or green and white, and that kind of thing. But they were the same game. And then later on, Tiger would come out with a miniature version of the same exact game, but call it by a different title. Radio Shack kind of did that, but not to the extreme Tiger did. This is the Tiger Electronic type of shape that Radio Shack came out with. But they also came out with a tabletop version of their baseball and football games as well. These you took on the go. The tabletop versions for or for home, of course. Let me just take a look inside here. But before we do, let's take a look at what's on the box. It says, play like the pros. Hit home run and score or strike out at the plate. Batter up. You don't have to be a big league star to play this fun game. Do your best to be a skillful pitcher or batter and get the score of 99 points within nine innings. We open this up here. Okay. Now, as you can see, the box is not in the greatest shape for pristine prestigious collectors like ourselves, but for a normal person this would be perfectly fine. Because of the box, and because it does not come with the instructions, and because the, unfortunately, the game itself, the discoloration is starting to come in, the um, same sort of discoloration the old Super Nintendo systems used to have, I'm going to throw this in for free with any purchase you make. If we come to an agreement on the handhelds, I mean, this will just come for free. But you have your directional buttons on both sides. And then you have the start, reset, and mode buttons as well. So let me put this back in. Now there are still, yes, there are still a few Radio Shack stores today. They are owned and operated independently. The company, of course, went out of business a while ago. Let's say 20 years ago, maybe. All right. We have a very decent-shaped football. This feels heavy. It feels like it comes with everything. We'll take a look. But on the football game, it says, Ready, Set, Hike. Charge down the field but try to avoid being tackled by the defense. A football game in the palm of your hand. On offense, see if you can score a touchdown. On defense, you've got to tackle the one with the ball. And just like the baseball games, this came in a, clan, this came in a tabletop version as well. Ooh. So not only does this come with the box? And not only does it come with the manual, but this game is brand new. It has never been opened. It's still in its plastic wrap. And it's still wrapped in plastic on the back. This has never been played before. This is pristine. Instruction manual for a moment. Let's see. This was made in 1993, this manual, which means it's when this game came out. So we're talking 31 years ago. 93 was 31 
years ago. Can you believe that? So, the introduction says, Your Radio Shack LCD football game puts you and the ball in motion. When your team is on offense, you control the ball carrier and decide whether to run, pass, or kick. When your team is on defense, your job is to tackle the player with the ball. It shows the control locations and what each button does. And it goes over the timing and scoring. So the game is played in four or five minute quarters. Two clocks appear in the upper left corner of the display. The minute clock on the left uh, shows the minutes, and then after five minutes, the game advances to the next quarter. The second clock on the right represents one second, and this is pretty cool for its time. The ball, both clocks will stop when the ball is not in play. The ball carrier passes the ball. The ball carrier kicks the ball. The defensive player tackles the ball carrier. The ball carrier makes a touchdown. And it has all the scoring. A touchdown is six points, and an extra point is one point, and the field goal is three. Um, the maximum score, by the way, is 99, and then it stops counting after that. Or maybe you win if you hit 99 first. Maybe that happens, too. I don't know. So, pretty cool. Let me put this gently back in the box here. sure that nothing gets ruined here for me. There we go. Perfect. Let's show you a racing game. This is called Sonic Car Racing. And this says, be a race car driver right in your own home with Sonic Car Racing. Compact design fits in your purse or briefcase. So you can be a car racing champion almost anywhere. Now, Radio Shack's racing games were pretty much the same concept, just different titles. So here you have Sonic Car Racing, very, very, very similar, if not exact, game that they came out with was Turbo Raceway. Um, so there's a bunch of different racing games that are basically the same game, just with a different name. And this also comes with not only the uh, plastic that it came in, but the instruction manuals on the back here. And this is in very good shape. Got a little, little dust on the screen, but that can be cleaned off easily. You have the on-off button, sound, and start, and pause button. And then you have the D-pad, the, um, and then the turbo button. Lastly, I'd like to show you uh, one of the games that we have in the collection for um, Radio Shack's uh, handhelds. 
this is an example of not only a action adventure sci-fi game but also a uh, tabletop what that means and what it looks like so right here we have the space alien tabletop game it says maneuver your spaceship through this outer space traffic jam basically this is the same kind of a game as the racing game the racing game, your job is to collect as many points as possible by maneuvering your way through the field of play and not have any cars bump into you. This is the same thing, just in outer space. It says, test your piloting skill with this fast-paced adventure game set in deep space. But watch out. The aliens are after you. Three, two one blast off maneuver your spaceship to avoid ramming aliens in this outer space traffic jam also functions as an lcd alarm clock with hourly chime and this is what the game itself looks like so we'll open this up does come with the instructions. Of course, the box is in there as good a shape as it can be in for as old as this is. Yeah, so very good condition as you can see. You have the left right buttons, very big buttons. And then you have the mode and clock buttons as well. And the interesting thing about these games were the only way they would shut off, there was no on or off button. The only way they would shut off is if you took the batteries out. If you left these batteries in, they just acted as clocks, alarm clocks, or just clocks in general. And then if you wanted to play the game function on it, you could. And in the background, what would normally happen is um, it would have like a demo mode where you could see the action on the screen even though you weren't playing. Uh, sort of like games when they came out for the, you know, in the arcades or, or even on home consoles at the time. If you didn't put a quarter in, it would just cycle through little snippets of gameplay. Well, that's what these did. And the only way a Radio Shack game would shut off is that the battery died or you took the battery out. Space Alien. There were three different versions of the game, and when I say versions, I actually mean the game was the same. They just came in smaller sizes to begin with. The first version, I still have my own personal collection, I'll show it to you in a second. The second version was sort of the same size as the first, just plastic. It was a newer model. But the first version of the game is this little bad boy right here. And this is the original space alien that I had as a kid. And it's metal, green metal on top. It feels like metal. And then plastic on the back. Very, very, very small version. And this has the left and right buttons. The date, mode, and A1 or A2. Now, interesting, I did not see that here. It must be under mode, I don't know. But A1 or A2, there were two different games um, that you could play. Two different versions of the game. This one seems to only have that one. 
but this is the first video game that I ever had in my life. I think it was $7.99. My mom bought it for me. My sister had a racing game called Highway. We still have that to this day as well. So, I could sell you the Tiger Electronic games, but what do you think of these Radio Shack Uncommon to Rare games? We have a whole bunch more that I can show you. Alas, I, I can't show you today. We, I'm the only one in the store. My associate was uh, stuck in traffic. He witnessed a car accident, and uh, he's not going to be in for another few hours. But uh, if you would, um, I can email you a day that I am free. I'll come in specially for you. And if it works for you, we'll set up a day that works for you, and I'll be able to show you every Radio Shack handheld that's in the store. I even have some really cool stuff in the back that no one knows about yet. That sounds great. Oh, before you leave, I'd like to show you a couple other things as well. So you've seen the Radio Shack games, but did you know that Konami, yes, Konami, makers of Contra, they came out with their own handheld versions of games as well. And I have a collection of a few, but again, I, I just pulled out uh, a complete set I wanted to show you, because uh, there are four in total. One of them is very easy to find, very common. The next two are a bit uncommon to, to rare, but the last one of the four is the rarest of them all. So, rarest of these four, I should say. I think there's one Konami handheld that is very rare. I think it's Bucky O'Hare, if I'm not mistaken, and I think Bucky O'Hare goes for almost $500 easy, just for a handheld 500 these days. Let me show you these Konami handhelds. First up, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this game came out in 1989. This game is 35 years old. 35 years. And I love this as a kid. I never had it. I always wanted it, but... Some friends in middle school, I think in the first grade, had this. And I used to play the heck out of it. They were bored of it, and they would bring it to school so I could play it. But I used to play it during recess and any chance I could at the lunchroom. Now, this is the most common one. The next one in the series, of course, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Splinter Speaks. This came out a year later, 1990. Uh, that was a bit spooky. The game turned on by itself. At least we know the batteries work. Uh, there's no way I pressed up here, so very odd. I pressed here is off. Here is on. Very strange, but the I, I don't think my game store is haunted. And if it is, I'm going to leave. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay. You can have all the games. I'll just run out of here and never come back. Um, but anyway, the uh, Splinter Speaks, and it was kind of funny title, but you see the speaker in the back where the sound came out? Well, in this game, there's voice. You can actually have um, audible sound, or not audible sound, but audible speech audible speech. So, there's the second. Now, the third one, of course, is the 
most rare of the three, and the final one in this trilogy. It's called Shredder's Last Stand. It does not have a date, though. I don't know when exactly this one came out, but I imagine a year later. I could be wrong, though, so... But, yes, this is also in very good condition. There's just a bit of dust on the game. Now, the last of the four, and this is the rarest, and this easily commands a couple hundred dollars at, at, at minimum. Very odd uh, title, but it is the Turtles Basketball Game. Yes, Turtles Basketball. The screen has seen better days, but it's definitely uh, still decently visible and usable. Um, there's no batteries in here, I don't think. Let's take a look. No, there is not. So we don't have to worry about the sound coming on on this. But, yeah, this is my prized Konami uh, handheld collection. I do have more, of course, much more than these. I think I have about four or five more at minimum, but we'll set up a day that you can come back and take a look at everything. The turtle collection I'm selling for uh, normally $350, but for you, if you and I work out a deal, I'll give you a good deal on them. I mean, the basketball game alone is upwards of 200 so I'll make you a good deal on the whole lot. Yes, I'm thinking this entire week I'm actually going to be tied up with a lot of personal stuff. I have a uh, um, ton of shows that are coming out uh, that I'll be watching uh, today, Tuesday, actually. I, before I opened the store, I stayed up all night and watched the rest of season three of American Horror Stories. Uh, yes, that came out today on Hulu. On iFix, excuse me. Um, but then tomorrow, I have uh, the next episode of Agatha All Along. I have the next episode of Grotesquerie. And then on Thursday, we have the season two release of Jurassic Park, uh, the cartoon... I want to say, for some reason, Chaos Theory is in my head, but I don't think that's the name of the of the show. It's, uh, yes, the Netflix show. It, it takes place years after the um, uh, Camp Crustaceous. It takes year, place years after that. There's somebody trying to kill all the remainder, all the, uh, all the kids. Yeah, season one ended on a cliffhanger. Um, season two releases Thursday, so that's coming out. And then also the new movie Smile 2 comes out in theaters Thursday night, so I'll be seeing that. And then uh, this weekend there's a, a ton more stuff coming out as well. That uh, The Penguin, there's a show From on MGM. Yes, From is easily the top three show I've ever seen in my life. Um, uh, top five, I would say X-Files is one of them, even though the reason I kept watching the show was to find out what happened to Mulder's sister. And when they aired the episode explaining what happened to her, I was livid and I think one of the, one of the most livid times I, I think I've ever been in a TV show before. Um, and yes, it had its revival, which was nice, but it it, it, it I didn't like it too much. Um, but X Files is definitely up there. A show called Nowhere Man came out in 1995 and only lasted one season because the 
Yes, you're right. You know that very few people do. The network uh, was t transferring from original programming to more so uh, inner city uh, comedies. Like, um, the network was called UPN at the time. And I believe UPN turned into the WB, if I'm not mistaken. So. When that happened, Nowhere Man was canceled, but very good show. That's up there. Uh, there's a show called John Doe that, again, only lasted one season, unfortunately. That was on Fox because of the writer's strike. And then when they came back, there was nowhere in the budget, and they had already agreed to a lot more shows, newer shows. So, But John Doe is a very excellent one. But this show from if not the best, the top three, easy, in my opinion. Um, so, maybe next week uh, we'll set up a time where we can meet and I'll show you uh, the rest of these, if you'd like. You would? Okay. Well, we'll definitely do that next week. But um, I appreciate you coming in. Um, would you like to take these turtle games now? And purchase them, or would you want to wait and come back for the see the rest of the, the lot? Okay, well, that, that makes sense. All right, well, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much, and I'll, I'll see you next week sometime. Sounds good. Goodbye. All right, I have to put these back and, and put them. I'll put them out back, that way they're safe and nothing can happen. Okay. And if this thing goes off again, I will run out of the store.